The Politics of Social Ecology, Libertarian Municipalism, by Janet Beale, published by Black Rose Books, 1998. Author's Note Libertarian Municipalism, the political dimension of the broader body of ideas known as social ecology was developed over the course of several decades by the anarchist social theorist Murray Bookchin. It is the culmination of a lifetime of his thinking about how society might best be radically transformed in a humane and rational way. Part of the international communist left since his youth in the 1930s, Bookchin has devoted his life to looking for ways to replace today's capitalist society which immiserates most of humanity and poisons the natural world, with a more enlightened and rational alternative. A close student of the European revolutionary tradition, he is best known for introducing the idea of ecology into leftist thought, and for first positing in 1962 that a liberatory society would also have to be an ecological society. For most of this century the existence of the Soviet Union created massive problems for the left, especially since it appeared to wed a century of revolutionary aspirations for a good society with a barbaric system of totalitarianism, gulags, and mass executions. The blow inflicted by this misalliance is one from which the left is still reeling. No less than his fellow leftists, Bookchin has had to grapple with the problem of rescuing this tradition from its Stalinist desecration. Bookchin himself had departed from the communist movement as a young man in the mid-1930s and had been a critic of vulgar Marxism thereafter, for its authoritarianism, for its instrumentalism, for its absence of ethics. But his personal departure from the communist movement was not an abandonment of the revolutionary project, on the contrary he proceeded to recast it in libertarian terms drawing upon the best of the anarchist and Marxist traditions to create a unique synthesis that he called social ecology. The society he foresaw would be one that eliminated not only capitalism but the nation-state, not only classes but hierarchies, not only exploitation but domination and that constituted a rational and ecological alternative. If Bookchin drew a critique of capitalism from Marxism, he has drawn ideas of communalism, anti-statism, and confederalism from the anarchist tradition. Yet anarchism, too, has not been immune to his criticism. In contrast to many anarchists of an individualistic bent, Bookchin is no enemy of institutions as such. Freedom that is conceived entirely in personal terms, that has no institutional embodiment, he argues, languishes as a narcissistic indulgence. A society that sustains both individual and social freedom, must be undergirded by institutions that are themselves liberatory. It must provide the structural means by which citizens can collectively manage their own affairs. The question, then, is not whether a free society will have institutions, but what kind. A crucial part of Bookchin's project has been to identify the revolutionary forms of freedom that give organizational substance to the idea of freedom. After decades of historical study and political engagement, he began writing about libertarian municipalism in 1972. In brief, libertarian municipalism seeks to revive the democratic possibilities latent in existing local governments and transform them into direct democracies. It aims to decentralize these political communities so that they are humanly scaled and tailored to their natural environments. It aims to restore the practices and qualities of citizenship so that men and women can collectively take responsibility for managing their own communities, according to an ethics of sharing and cooperation, rather than depend on elites. Once direct democracies have been created, the democratized municipalities could be knit together into confederations that could ultimately present a challenge to capitalism and the nation-state, leading to a rational ecological anarchist society. By the late 1970s and early 1980s, when he had fully developed these ideas, they influenced a variety of grassroots movements in the United States and Europe. Today they potentially have even greater significance, for the collapse of the Soviet Union, despite its desecration of the revolutionary tradition, has paradoxically produced disarray on the left and necessitated a search for a new direction, a new way to empower people in a liberatory society. Nor is it only the current leftist dilemma for which Bookchin's ideas have relevance. Across the American political spectrum, a wide variety of thinkers are lamenting the evisceration of the civic sphere in the United States today. 
not only the left but the center and even the right are all bewailing the decline of community life and civic participation. On this issue too Bookchin's municipal approach offers a radical left perspective. Finally around the world, transnational capital is creating a giant market in which incalculable profits are reaped by the few, plunging the many into poverty and despair, obliterating traditional societies, and poisoning the biosphere. Bookchin's libertarian municipalism explores the institutions that could potentially arrest this rapacious system of exploitation and biocide. To date, unfortunately Bookchin's published writings on libertarian municipalism have not received the wide public attention that they deserve. One reason for this may be that they are not as accessible as they might be. Many of his articles appear in hard-to-find periodicals, while his own book From Urbanization to Cities, rich as it is in historical and theoretical material, is massive enough in scope and execution to be formidable to many readers. For some years it has seemed to me that a concise and abbreviated exposition was needed that would make the ideas of libertarian municipalism more accessible to the general reader. Hence this book, which is intended as a brief, introductory overview. I have made no attempt to interpret, analyze, or assess libertarian municipalism. Rather, my purpose has been to provide a straightforward synopsis of its basic points as Bookchin developed them, including a sketch of the historical context in which he set them. I have also attempted to provide material on the practical aspects of organizing a libertarian municipalist movement. Let me emphasize that the ideas that appear in these pages are all Bookchin's, only their articulation is mine. In the interview that appears in the second part of the book, I have raised with Bookchin some of the questions that in my 10-year association with him, I have heard most frequently asked in discussions of these ideas. I am grateful to Bookchin for his support for this project and for the interview. Let me emphasize that the ideas that appear in these pages are all Bookchin's, only their articulation is mine. In the interview that appears in the second part of the book, I have raised with Bookchin some of the questions that in my 10-year association with him, I have heard most frequently asked in discussions of these ideas. He read the manuscript in draft and commented on it, to its immense benefit. Cindy Milstein and Gary Sisko also read an early draft and made invaluable suggestions, for which they have my warm thanks. Dimitri Rousseau-Poulos of Black Rose Books has my deep gratitude for his unflagging support for this project. I have tried to present these ideas in the simplest possible terms for the benefit of readers who are wholly unfamiliar with them. Bookchin's own writings contain philosophical and historical nuances that are absent here. Readers who are interested in learning more about libertarian municipalism and should of course consult the writings listed at the end of this book. In no way should this book be considered a substitute for Bookchin's original works, only a summary introduction to them. It is my hope that libertarian municipalism will become a touchstone for the resuscitation of the left, in a time of its weakness and disarray. I believe that these ideas could be fruitful for the left on an international scale. Probably inevitably, my presentation is refracted through the prism of the culture in which I live and write, I hope that readers outside the United States will be able to interpret the main principles in the context of their own cultures. Signed Janet Beale Burlington, Vermont, November 27, 1996